Let me go ahead and pull up the Pokedex listing. Godspeed. <laughs> I mean, they couldn't have shown many. I mean, you know what? That's true. Fuck that. This one's the easiest one we'll have had since Gen 1. Yeah, there's like 12. <laughs> yeah, probably, yeah. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, I'm looking at It'll it. It'll read every time Crow Gunkle or whatever shows up. Crow Gunkle! <laughs> What's up, Pocket Dudes? Welcome to Pokemon Go to the Movies, the Gigaboost Podcast Network very own Pokemon movie podcast. I'm your host, Dan Video Games, and with me is Bob. Verizon Wireless. Shibuya Gato. I don't understand, said Terrakian. And Dr. Agro. Oh, I just got it. It's like that book. Chris Wolfhard, unfortunately, won't join us mid-recording uh, because of a power outage. He will maybe join us at the end. But for people who haven't listened to Pokemon Go to the Movies before, Pokemon Go to the Movies is a show where we recap Pokemon movies, talk about various plot events and cool visuals, if there are cool visuals. And then we have a number of segments and measurements we judge each movie based on, such as the whimsy meter, the dex check, the gun check, we're about halfway through on our comprehensive journey through all the Pokemon movies. And this time we're watching Pokemon the movie, Kyurem versus the Sword of Justice. Or as it's known in Japan, Pocket Monsters, Best Wishes, the movie, Kyurem versus the Sacred Swordsman, Keldeo. Which I've been pronouncing Keldeo this whole time because that just flat out sounds better. What is wishes in there? What? I d dude, I don't know, but that's before the fucking hyphen. <laughs> so now I just go, how long has that been in there? <laughs> it's been at least a few movies. Is that just what all of Gen 5 is referred to? See, that's what I was thinking. Oh, best wishes black and white. Oh. It's stupid. Oh. Okay. Oh. There's <laughs> layers going on. Shibuya, did you have like a Sherlock moment where numbers and 41 scale? <laughs> you figured that out? <laughs> See, I just thought about it for a bit and then I was like, BW. Oh. Yeah, that's that's dumb enough for them. That's <laughs> and, dumb enough. <laughs> and then the and then the letters switch place and you're like Warner Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> Or Yakko and Dot going to be in this one? Oh, that would be so sick. Hey, imagine the if Bugs Bunny fought fucking Kiram in this movie instead. This movie would be 20 minutes. Kiram just gets tricked into falling down a hole again. Bugs Bunny just goes, I saw a guy do this in a toothpaste ad once, and then Kiram eats shit and dies. There was a bucket of water at Kiram who freezes it and then gets stabbed in the face. <laughs> Oh, yes. What is this? The World Combat movie? <laughs> hey, hey, get over here. <laughs> anyway, uh, oh man, the Mortal Combat movie. They're still making another one of those, aren't they? Oh, I think they are. Yeah, they keep talking about that ever since the first one came out. And by the first one, I mean the first reboot one. <laughs> right. Anyway, we got to talk about this Pokemon movie. Pokemon is the thing they yell at the beginning of all of these because it's the intro bit. They're in the sky, they're in the sea, they're in towns, they're in cities, they're everywhere, man. You can't escape them. This time, they're even animated gifts flying towards the screen <laughs> in a fancy little border. Wow. Uh, they really didn't try this time, so we go straight from this moment <laughs> no. to Pikachu fighting Dredagon. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then the intro ends, and then we get a POV shot running through tall grass, and apparently we are in the, in the perspective of... Keldeo, as they say, and he's fighting Verizon Wireless. <laughs> he, he, he does all these fancy attacks like shooting water out of his hooves, and I'm God. like, yeah, that should be what that attack does. I, I mean, it's the, it fits the text of that move, but I didn't expect uh, watching Keldeo shoot hoove water the whole movie. Yeah, it just <laughs> it looks weird and wrong. Like, it shouldn't happen. The, it shouldn't. It's, you're like, it's unnatural. <laughs> like, I'm like, okay, I get it. He's like a horse thing, and he's kicking, and we we extend yeah. that out with water, but he just, he looks like one of those fucking water jetpack guys, and it's weird. <laughs> yes. See, my brain keeps looking at it and seeing wacky arm inflatable tube man turned upside down shooting water. <laughs> <laughs> The problem is I'm trying to think where else you would have it shoot out from other than just a beam from his mouth like every other Pokemon. And there's no other good alternative. What's wrong with like, that? Like, you lose no matter what with this one. What if he just shot water out of his eyes? <laughs> <laughs> that would actually be pretty fucking raw. That would be horrifying, actually, yeah. Just high-pressure jets directly from the tear down. <laughs> like, like a water ponytail just turns its blue gaze to you. 
<laughs> the best part is it still needs to fit the text of a move or whatever. So he like shoots the water out of his eyes and then flies at you donkey kick first. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man. Anyways, uh Verizion. Which I, I, I call him Verizion. Did they really call him Verizion in this movie? I think so. It's Verizion, I don't care. They yeah, s- same. This movie's just wrong nonstop. Yeah, we'll we get all- to that in ten seconds when they fuck up again. <laughs> they already yeah. just talked about the hove water. So obviously <laughs> there's a lot of wrong happening. Uh so uh they're they're talking Kel Dio and Verizion. Uh, and then Verizian runs away. The chase ensues before they do another small skirmish near a puddle. And Verizian's own uh, owns Keldeo with an attack using its face horn sword. Uh, why is it a gigantic pillar that comes out of his head straight up? It looks so stupid and wrong. And <laughs> these are some of my favorite Pokemon legendary designs. And to see them do this to them, <laughs> it's just upsetting. Well, they're, they're the legendary swords. It, it's a quadruped, Bob. Where else is the sword going to come out? Like, it's back hooves? He wants it to stand on its two fucking back hooves, okay? <laughs> Bob, you are everything wrong with modern Pokemon design. <laughs> Stop having them stand up. Absolutely you sick not. son of a bitch. I, Dan's putting words in my mouth. I would never want that. Make something reasonable for a horn. Mm. Not this thing that's 12 miles long. <laughs> it's funny. It's no. so stupid. They just get Bob. like... It's, 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 they, they turn into like uh, that dude from JoJo's with the hair just goes straight up. <laughs> if weight isn't an issue, then that horn length is pretty optimal as an offensive weapon. Yeah, you're suddenly wanting Pokemon to be more realistic. I don't want it to be realistic. I want it to not look stupid. <laughs> Bob, are you trying to say Verizon looks like Polnareff? Is that? Yes, it turns into Polnareff. <laughs> okay, so who all do we have upset right now? <laughs> Polnareff fans, some Pokemon fans. I mean, you could have just said it's it's gone from that one part of Hunter Hunter, and I think more people would have agreed. <laughs> it's that kind of absurdity. Uh, Verizon, after owning Caldeo, laughs because Caldeo's impotent. Then, jarringly, it cuts to Keldeo fighting Terrakion in a battle and uh, getting his ass whipped. Terrakion uh, has a rock fall over on him, and then he he grabs it with his back, and he just sits there, and he grows the horn blade. Because <laughs> they but all then, do this for some reason. But then he just breaks the rock with his back, really? <laughs> the horn blade didn't really seem to help Terrakion much there, but oh well. Then, again... It abruptly cuts to a forest at night where it's storming violently. And Keldeo is fighting Cobalion <laughs> because it's a cobalt colored Pokemon. Uh huh. Or if you're stupid, Cobalion. <laughs> These motherfuckers could be handed a Pokemon whose name starts with the word green and go, Gren? <laughs> I cannot stress this is the worst one yet. Cobalt yeah. is a part of its name. It's literally blue. The inspiration is clearly cobalt. Right. And the fact that they pronounce it wrong the entire movie just makes me upset. It drives me insane. <laughs> but then I feel a little bit better learning that <laughs> Cobalion's VA is Elmo's dad from Sesame Street. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, that seems about right for this movie. <laughs> That's really funny. <laughs> oh, man. Oof. Yeah, Caldeo keeps trying to fight Cobalion. I, I can't even... Anyway. Uh, and Caldeo... Uh, Dan, Dan, please. It's, it's Claudio. Okay. Cal- Claudio is trying to fight Cobalion, who is an alien. That's why its name is said <laughs> like that. Uh, but Cobalion isn't having it. Uh, trees start lighting into flames when they're struck with lightning, and Caldeo smashes the burning tree, insisting that they need to have this fight right now. And then Cobalion says he's reckless and grows his horn blade. <laughs> Caldeo asks, when will you let me fight Kyurem? I want to be a sword of justice. And this line is when I start to worry this may be the worst movie we've watched so far. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and then Caldeo jumps to attack him with a little baby horn. There's a flash of light, fade to white, and now Caldeo is hanging out with the other three as they discuss whether or not he's ready to fight Kyurem. But he can't use his sword yet. Only then can he fight Kyurem. We fade to them sleeping at night, and Caldeo sneaks away. They think he's gone to fight Kyurem. 
I have a note here to rant about the plot of this movie and how dumb it is, but I just, I don't feel it right now. It maybe it'll well up in me later. Chaldea runs up to a large mountain that has a sort of dilapidated industrial facility inside that's abandoned. <laughs> kind of reminds me of a place in Xenoblade Chronicles 3. It's dark and scary inside, and Keldeo starts getting bullied by snowflakes. <laughs> <laughs> the three other legendary swords make their way to the facility while inside, Kiram shoots out icy fog and asks Keldeo if he thinks he's worthy of battling him. Keldeo says he's a sword of justice, which is a lie, so his horn will grow like Pinocchio, right? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, before the battle's even begun, Kiram just starts emanating ice energy, which covers Keldeo in a frost, and then erupts an archway of ice out of the ground, and it looks absolutely sick. It's like jagged crystals of ice forming this arena and this archway for him to enter through. Keldeo instantly gets owned, but then he donkey kicks Kiram, <laughs> spraying with it, him with the hoof water afterward, and then gets owned again. The other three show up. They're shocked that the battle has begun and that Keldeo's calling himself a sword of justice, which he is not. They start getting really, really upset when he says it again, and Kobelian just goes, that's not true. <laughs> <laughs> Someone I, stop him. He's lying. And, and this is what I go. Am I watching Paw Patrol? <laughs> yes! That's the exact moment I had that thought too. Yes! <laughs> I, I compared it to Coco Melon. Uh, but that's a fair, a fair note. <laughs> anyway, Kiram lops off half of Keldeo's horn. I hope he dies. <laughs> <laughs> Tracheon wants to help, but Cobalion tells him not to. Kiram is outraged at the interference from Tracheon and transforms into white Kiram. He powers up immensely and freezes the three interferers into ice. Keldeo then runs away like a bitch. And as he runs down these train tracks for a minecart, he just blatantly runs off of a cliff he could see coming a mile away. There's like no distraction to pull his vision away from where he's running. So he just runs off a ledge and then starts eating shit and falling down a cliff. And it is a really, really funny moment. Good hearing it. <laughs> Then we smash cut to inspirational Christian music as our main <laughs> cast is riding a train. The lyrics go, we are together now, friends forever now. No matter what comes our way, we won't run away. This is rancid. Yeah. Yeah, this is the opening for the actual show at this point. Oh, and my I'd God. Like you to know, oh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. It gets dire with the dub. Oh. I was writing oh. notes about how long this opening sequence was taking and how it's all these Pokemon. And I'm like, where the fuck is Ash? Where the fuck is the title card? The moment I say, where is the title card? It appears. And I look at the timestamp. 15 minutes. <laughs> 15 <laughs> minutes for the title to show up in this movie. Yeah. 15 minutes for a human to show up in this movie. Unacceptable. That's... I don't fucking <laughs> enjoy that. <laughs> they no. counteract that by every legendary being able to speak and having nonstop conversations that suck. <laughs> and we go straight from when they got it uh, having, no, the legendary shouldn't talk anymore to every legendary talks, deal with it. Uh, uh, I really <laughs> thought that was a good idea. Yeah. It's funny because like when it was one, I was like, whatever. But now it's five, <laughs> right? It's so many. Uh, it, it sure is a good thing they all have interesting and meaningful things to say. Uh huh. Uh -huh. The only one I give a pass to is Kiram, who's like, "I'm gonna fucking kill you." Ah! <laughs> and then, and then Tarakia's like, "Hey, don't kill him," and he's like, "Now I'm gonna kill you." <laughs> <laughs> uh, as our main cast rides this train uh, from Team Rock Team Rocket's very own James looks on from a ledge wearing a cool detective outfit like a Columbo coded thing hope this comes up elsewhere in the movie yeah it's gonna be really important right the song keeps looping this terrible chorus over and over I should sue for damages <laughs> and the montage ends and Jesse is wearing the same outfit oh wow they might actually accomplish something this movie. Our heroes arrive at Windy Station. Their destination, however, is Roshan City. It's a bit further ahead. Allegedly, they're going to only stop here for a few minutes. A stand nearby is selling Darumaka boxed lunches and Darumaka wind chimes. Silen, who once again should be called Salon because it's cilantro, and I, I need a time machine and a gun. <laughs> <laughs> the gun check. Could a gun have solved the pronunciation issues in this movie? Yes. <laughs> uh, he wants 15 Darumaka 
boxed lunches and some ice creams and stuff. Vanilla gets them the ice cream treats out of this freezer, and it's very cute. And they start to leave, but then Scraggy trips Ash, who's carrying all these boxed lunches. Oh, no, but it's okay. All the Pokemon catch them. Anyways, I, they, what's up? Before <laughs> we move on, we can't just leave her hanging. This lady selling them Darmaka lunches is the only unique character to this film. I just want to point that out. Yeah. Yeah. Like they left and I'm like, she didn't, she didn't like explain a local festival or a, or a legend or. She didn't run after them and get stuck on the train going, Hey, you forgot your drinks or anything. That was the movie character and we're just leaving. Oh, yeah. oh no. <laughs> <laughs> also, who let this baby work? This vanilla should be protected by child labor laws. What the fuck? Yeah, it should, but it's so cute. That vanilla is amazing. <laughs> he is, but he should be earning a fair wage when he's older. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's baby. It's fine. Baby. <laughs> Next to the train, my single favorite move moment in this movie happens. Caldeo is still falling down the cliff. <laughs> like it's the Kung Pao opening and he lands on the train banged up to hell. They should just fully deliver on this Kung Pao bit. Have Ash pick him up and just continue rolling him down the cliff. Bye bye. <laughs> Uh, but upon boarding the train, Pikachu is like, Pika, 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 and then runs them towards Caldeo. Caldeo, uh, Caldeo uh, meets Ash on top of the train, and they're all like, oh, shit, look at this. Uh, what's up with uh, you? Hang on, hang on. Because <laughs> Pikachu, like, they have a thing, and then Pikachu looks up. He didn't hear anything. He didn't smell anything. Pikachu sensed the plot yes. was in that direction. It's true. <laughs> he, it, It's like... Uh, it's like those rods they have to find water or whatever you use them for in the Pokemon <laughs> games. The dowsing machine. Mm -hmm. Pikachu has that for plot lines. He could follow them back to the source. So anyways, they're like, hey, what's up with this Keldeo? He looks really banged up. And Keldeo's like, Ugh. And then Kyurem shows up and that answers that question. <laughs> he starts freezing the entire train over. So the main cast runs away and they get to the back car on the train, hiding inside of it. And then Ash is like, hey. Why are you doing this? And Kirim gets knocked off the train by it going into a cave. He can't follow in, so he's just like, ah, crap. They're inside of this cave that the train is going through, and Iris goes, hey, my character should know about dragons. I will now say my <laughs> character knows about dragons. <laughs> you got any dragon Pokemon to go along with that? <laughs> just roll your dragon knowledge check. <laughs> I know, this had a real, hey, DM, my character should know about this, right? <laughs> Iris remembers being told about Kyurem once by the Elder. The Elder explains, Kyurem came into existence at the same time as Zekrom and Reshram, and it's really strong. It's probably the strongest dragon-type Pokemon in the world, and it uses ice attacks. And then we cut back to them, and that had a real, there will be a chosen one energy. <laughs> Is this accurate to the games? I always assumed uh, Kyurem absorbed Zekrom or Reshram to become these different forms. But I didn't play version he, he 2. He doesn't absorb them. I'm trying to remember the mechanism through which you create a white or black Reshiram. It's a held item, I'm pretty sure. Okay. I'd also like to point out that the entire crew, who canonically have met either Zekrom or Reshiram, just go, Wow, the power of Zekrom and Reshiram, and never address the last movie, making the last movie just non-canon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I kept yep. waiting for Ash to be like, Oh man, I wonder what Rashram's like. This is what happens when you make two movies with different box legendaries. You can't canonize either of them. Oh. He's like, where was this fucker during our last crisis directly involving these legendaries? <laughs> well, he was living in this random destroyed cave, cave mine, Abandoned mine. Everyone knows that. Nurse Joy's like, oh yeah, uh, Hugh just lives there. Uh-huh. <laughs> At Roshan City, they take Keldeo to a Pokemon Center. Nurse Joy uses state-of-the-art technology to confirm, in fact, half of its horn is missing. <laughs> <laughs> she then shows uh, the main cast a cool clip reel of how, the, how cool the Swords of Justice are, and then there's Keldeo. We cut away from this moment to a shot that is supposedly about outside, but don't be distracted. It's still about the hospital. Sure, our main cast is through that window, but more importantly, in the foreground, a cub chew is being pulled around on a gurney by Audino. And this is the second best moment in this movie. <laughs> outside, they introduce themselves to Caldeo. He says he challenged Kurum and then bitched out and ran. As Ash asks, hey, Caldeo, 
Are you a bitch? <laughs> he says, no, I'm going to go fight him right now. <laughs> so Ash and the team decide to help. But before they do, they need to eat 15 Darumaka box lunches. Did the Pokemon company ever sell this uh, bento box, the Darumaka one? I feel like that has to be the case, right? I hope they did. Me too. That, that, would, that would be really good. The only thing I could think of that would be better is like a Rotom bento box. Hmm. Yeah, it sounds like pop-up cafe fodder. I'm not seeing an actual product for it. I'm just seeing people make like a little Darumaka out of meat and rice inside of a bento, which is very cute, to be fair. Yeah. Uh, Ash and Caldeo on during eating the food start choking and the others laugh at them in the background. Meowth is on a monorail in a detective outfit and the makers of this movie laugh at me. <laughs> <laughs> See, I never saw the other two. I didn't notice them. I just saw Jesse in the opening. <laughs> I spent this whole movie going, they're just, they're not going to show up, are they? <laughs> um, it took way too long for them to realize that they didn't need them in the movie. And they realized it during the movie where I could have gone, please, anything. <laughs> right, anything give me else. one thing. <laughs> Hiram shows up on the water with this posse of snowflakes to bully people. <laughs> uh, there's a flashback to the elder explaining to Iris white Kiram and black Kiram and how those forms work. And it, it wields the powers of Reshrov and Zekrov, whatever. Anyways, the city starts freezing over. The snowflakes start bullying the main cast. They run. Kiram shows up. Pikachu attacks it and they become black Kira before attacking them. And then there's more running away. He flies to the top of a tower. Pikachu and Keldeo fight off the cryogonal, which it, I'm surprised this movie doesn't call him cryogenal. <laughs> As Ash separates from the team for some reason, Keldeo jetpacks away using his hoove water. It's a whole thing. It's a pretty funny looking sequence. It really, really solidifies the uh, wacky arm inflatable two man energy to this kid flying. It just looks like he's going to run out and be a dried out little thing. <laughs> and it's horrible. No! <laughs> <laughs> Bob, have you ever looked at it like a blast toys and been like after hydro pump? Is it all shriveled up? No, no because it shoots. It's got a gun and clearly a water tank somewhere in its shell. You look at a blast toys and you're like, yeah, that thing shoots water. Like th there's a lot of weird and frankly bad Pokemon designs out there. But you look at this weird little Hasbro horse <laughs> and it goes, I know water gun. And you think, why? Why do you know water gun? Because I... Because I know that is it. a failure of design. Oh. So, anyways, during the jetpack thing, they 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 land the the Cryginas corner Keldeo on the frozen oh. water. So Ash uses Boldor to skate across the ice. He's like, "Come on, Boldor!" And I just sat there for a moment, going, "Really, Boldor? That Ash? You're gonna facilitate Boldor to solve this problem? Look, it ended up being the coolest thing." I thought he said Voltorb. I also <laughs> said that, and then Boldor was skating them over the ice, and I went. Wow, that little man can really go. Good I, for him. I know. Uh, I'm shocked that Ash was like, obviously, I'm bringing out Boldor to do a really cool skate across this ice. <laughs> like, oh, well, well then. Uh, fuck me, I guess. They escape uh, the cryogonal and stuff because the uh, sequence is over. Yeah. The team goes underground <laughs> to the old subway to escape. They then discover the old subway station was converted into a museum. Then they steal a blimp and escape. What the fuck is this movie? I don't know. Yeah, I don't. What the fuck? <laughs> when when I say this, <laughs> listener, you need to understand it is truly just fucking random that they find a blimp in an abandoned subway station that was turned into a museum and it's fully functional and Iris can pilot her, her herself. Mm -hmm. What the hell? Yeah, the, the, from this point to the rest of the film, I just kept going, okay. <laughs> out loud for the remaining 20 minutes <laughs> right uh the cryogonals start catching up to iris on the blimp and iris tells axia oh, we'll be fine elsewhere ash silen and kel dio get off a cable car a flashback reveals their plan was for iris to run distraction as a kel dio went off to save his friends kel dio reflects on this and says iris <laughs> <laughs> Iris tells the cryogonal, you're out of luck. It's just X you mean. X you makes the most annoying song and dance it can until Kiram comes up and freezes the blimp. Their sacrifice will be remembered. <laughs> like he coats it in frost and the engine seizes up and then the the rigid airship full of gas just starts plummeting for some reason. Maybe it's the weight of uh, all the ice? I, I... Unclear. Unclear. 
It's just, it's clearly because of the composition of the shot and everything else. It is obvious that at this moment, Iris is on a blimp covered in ice with a failed engine that is plummeting towards a lake. I need you to remember this, listener. <laughs> <laughs> Silent runs off on a train distracting the cryogonal. They flash back and explain it again. <laughs> we get it, movie. They're running distraction duty. We don't need all these flashbacks. What what number flashback is this? Like nine? I don't know. Probably. And this is the point where I said, wow, it really is Coco Melon because it thinks you're three years old. <laughs> instead of thinking of all those heist tabletop games where instead of actually planning the heist, you just go, okay, we have a flashback where I totally brought a crowbar. <laughs> <laughs> so as we come out of this flashback it cuts to silent and you know the crag and all are catching up and he goes gut it stun fisk and stun fisk is just on the controls for this train and starts screaming and shooting electricity and it's the best it's so it good <laughs> as ash and Caldea walk through the forest Caldea remembers the swords of justice be cool and friends and strong and him watching from the sideline and i'm like movie we are running out of flashbacks stop this is no, an exhaustible resource no we don't you could say a sentence you can just say it we'll believe you you don't have to show us no they have to show us because clearly 20 minutes of him training with them before going off to fight kiram wasn't enough yeah <laughs> Caldeo tells Ash about the Swords of Justice one by one. I am not recapping this. This is filler. This movie is 70 minutes long. <laughs> uh -huh. And it is padded. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's, it's vile. It's like a 30-minute episode. They padded it out. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> like, why did you cut Team Rocket out of this if you didn't have anything to fill it with? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It's like they sold me a Twinkie with no cream in it. <laughs> uh, this is where I feel sad that Chris isn't here. At the end of each of these segments where he talks about the Swords of Justice, Ash says a sentence summing up their char character. And when he gets to Cobalion, I swear to you, he says, so this Cobalion, he uh, has plans, huh? <laughs> <laughs> and if you don't trust me, I guess you'll have to watch Pokemon the Movie 15, Kira versus the Sword of Justice. And I apologize for anybody who went out to watch Pokemon the Movie 15, Kieran versus the Sword of Justice after this comment. Uh, Kieran figures out Silent is a distraction. Silent calls the Pokemon Crustle because Glottal Tees don't exist in this universe. I get that it's a, well, whatever. Anyways, you know what my favorite brand of water is, Bob? Nestle. <laughs> anyway. Ash and Caldeo are good friends and find their way to the spooky Kiram lair. Kiram is back and Caldeo starts pitching out and making the funniest face I can imagine. They just need to add snot and his eyes tearing up even more. Uh, anyways, uh, he's being a bitch, so Ash and Pikachu run off to save the day while he hyperventilates. Silent sees Iris in the blimp, covered in ice, and just waves. And she waves back. <laughs> and I'm like, what? Everything's fine. Anyways, you'll be remembered. Bye, Iris. Everything's fine now, I guess. I don't know. Ash spots the three frozen legendaries and starts booking for them. Or booking it for them. I guess he doesn't really keep track of their accounting or anything. Ash and his Pokemon try to break the legendaries loose. To which I ask, why doesn't he use the aura? <laughs> I feel like they probably do need an accountant. Like, they seem to be running some sort of marketing campaign to let people know what the Swords of Justice are, but not actually doing anything. Uh, <laughs> right? Hmm. We have all this B-roll, but but no, like, actual footage of them accomplishing anything. <laughs> yeah. Also, hats off to Ash. He sees a giant ice problem, and the boy pulls out a fire type. I know. He's figuring it out, finally. After 15 years, he's learning. I'm so proud of him. See, he should have just gotten Boldor though, and had it skate around three dimensionally <laughs> on the surface of the well, ice. Well, doesn't he also summon Boldor? Yes, mm -hmm. but Isn't no skating. Both of them, yeah. That's just because Boldor rules, and you want him on screen as much as possible. He's really right. strong. Yes, honestly. <laughs> Kurum tells them to leave. They say no, and as Kurum attacks them, Keldeo shows up to save them. Reminder: This is a moment where Keldeo overcomes his fear of Kurum to save his friends. 
Keldeo explains that he lied and he's not a sword of justice yet and had no right to challenge him to a battle. And Kiram says, I knew it all along. <laughs> <laughs> and resummons the ice archway in arena and demands Keldeo <laughs> enter through the archway once more and finish this. Keldeo thinks about how his friends are with him there all along. He starts glowing. Iris survives the Zeppelin crash. <laughs> <laughs> and apparently, like, comes inside with Silent. I don't know how she survived the crash off screen. That sounds more interesting than this. Uh, but Keldeo transforms into having longer hair and a small black sword on its head. Then Keldeo creates multiple images of himself while attacking Kurum. The entire main staff is trying to free the other three legendaries while Keldeo gets the shit whipped out of him. Yeah, I like that Ash literally has like, like a lead pipe he's just beating yeah, on this Yeah, he just brought mess. a metal pipe to the, to the actual... <laughs> it's good. He it's should so do that good. more often. He should carry that around at all times. He should. Mm -hmm. He could probably solve a lot of problems. That would become his new thing. <laughs> Instead of the gun check, it's the pipe check. Yeah. Could a metal pipe have fixed this? You can't prove it's not a Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> and if you try, guess what? Lead pipe. Hey, Gen 12, the metal pipe Pokemon. I'm calling it now. <laughs> Just wait. I feel like we're closer to it than that, but okay. <laughs> I'm giving them one in between, Jen. Second DLC comes out led by. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, they got me. <laughs> that would be so fucking hilarious. Anyway, uh, Caldeo get, gets its hooves frozen to the ground and Kiram transforms. The audio track starts having a lovely high-pitched droning sound throughout it because you see Kiram has like a jet turbine for a butt. Caldeo spurts out of the ice block, is a sentence I wrote, and becomes 30 mid-air Caldeos that shoot energy balls at Kiram, which creates a shockwave of some sort and then it frees the three legendary swords. <laughs> I, I don't know why, but I was like, I, I watched Kanking and Ashra last night. <laughs> and part of a fight scene from that mix in with this was like, and that's the part where his leg gets frozen, and then Kyurem comes up and breaks his leg. No, that's not in this. <laughs> <laughs> no, that is that is not in this. However, uh, Caldeo does yet again get the shit whipped out of him by Kyurem. The Swords of Justice tell the main cast that it's Caldeo's battle, and only he can end it. Caldeo hears inside of his head a bunch of advice from the Three Swords of Justice, and then he attacks Kyurem confidently. He's still getting whipped, though, and the movie's now crunching down to, like, six frames per second to prevent flickering or just possibly save money. Mm-hmm. Caldeo then lands one definitive hip, which really pisses Kiram off. Verizon says, if only Caldeo could use his sword. Kiram then freezes Caldeo like he did the other three, and inside of this ice block, Caldeo starts glowing with a golden light and grows a gigantic sword. Secret sword, they yell from the sideline like it's like it's the word of the day or something. I don't know. <laughs> Again, moment? It's, we can't have a moment of silence. It's got to be Coco Melon. They got to be talking to you because you're six and you're stupid. <laughs> Caldeo stabs Kira right in the chest <laughs> and then afterward blocks a flamethrower attack with the sword. Kira says that because he found his true power and that this is that makes this a true battle now and shoots a giant electric ball at the main cast. Caldeo jumps up cuts it in half it explodes but doing this burned the hell out of Caldeo who just passes out. Kira steps on his horn and yells. Keldeo admits defeat to Kiram. Kiram notes that Keldeo took the fatal blow to protect his friends, calling his sword fine. And then he walks away. <laughs> you know, he pulled himself out of, out of a confident position to save his friends. Unlike that moment earlier where he came, overcame his fear to save his friends. Yeah, but this time it's different because he was in resolute form. Yeah, because the whole time Kiram <laughs> wanted to see his sword. And now that he has his sword out. And he called like, him oh. fine. <laughs> Caldeo is way too young for you to be saying shit like that, Kiram. Go back in your cave. <laughs> the moral of the story is that Kiram is fucking crazy. And he lives in that abandoned mine by choice. Yeah, that's, yeah. If, yeah, if we this, learned anything. Yeah, and this fucking 10-year-old horse decided that he wanted to throw hands. And when the adult man threw hands too hard, he got scared and fucking ran away like a little bitch baby. It's like, yeah, you want to be a member of our club? You have to go under this bridge and fight the guy who lives there. <laughs> You have to fight crazy old man Jenkins. Kiram clearly needs a scraggly beard. He's kind of like his scrunched up face. I start out loud theorizing. Is this going to be the worst Pokemon movie? How could they make a worse one? And then out loud, 
one of us goes, the fat kid on rollerblades movie. And I'm like, good, that's an upgrade. <laughs> I would watch that. Anyways, the facility starts collapsing because it is. Yeah, they need one more set piece. Early, they didn't. So Kieran freezes it all and then he walks away. That thing he was already doing. <laughs> I'd like to make one note about the, the facility crashing down on itself because there's like this big metal structure. The stuff starts falling. And when Ash was trying to free the Swords of Justice with the metal pipe, I was like, now I'm picturing an edit where it's just the metal pipe sound effects every time it connects with the ice. And then the shit falls and I hear the exact metal pipe sound. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I heard them use it. I lost my shit. The audio designer's like, I love this sound. <laughs> metal pipe SFX, my beloved. <laughs> it's from my favorite game, Gary's Mod. <laughs> <laughs> They award Caldeo the title Sword of Justice, and they're going to do a Sword of Justice oath that Ash will witness. Caldeo transforms into his resolute form from the battle, and then Verizon, keep in mind, we didn't know this was the name of this, just goes, that's Caldeo's resolute form. And I go, how do you know that? She talked to Professor Oak. We went oh. over this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, I remember that flashback, too. That was real, definitely. This is no shit how the oath goes. <clears throat> Greater than one is two. Greater than two is three. Greater than three is four. I start seeing red at this moment. <laughs> when the strength of friends is combined into one, the then true power and courage are created. And then they touch horns and it fades to white. And then we get the credits. The worst credits we've had so far. The main cast takes off on the Zeppelin they stole earlier in the movie. They wave. <laughs> Caldeo runs after. There's another inspirational Christian song that kicks in. Be brave. Be strong. Be honest. Have faith and do what's right. Just believe and never lose sight of your destiny. And then there's random scenes of our cast camping. And Team Rocket is shown pushing their car uphill, wearing the same outfits from earlier. That's it. Worth noting, though, the description for this movie on Amazon is a new challenge, an ancient foe, a battle of destiny. Clearly, they didn't have much to work with. <laughs> no. Anyway, that's it for the plot synopsis. We can now move on to our delightful segments. Right after a word from our sponsor, me, or more accurately, you, if you go over to patreon.com slash GB podcast, where you can get early access to the next episode of Pokemon Go to the Movies. Also, early access to Chugging Bleach, our Bleach Rewatch podcast, which is seven years. It's going to last seven years. Don't say that. We're about three in or something. Anyways, and a bunch of commentary tracks for a bunch of movies like Good Burger and Good Burger 2. And, um, you know, I'm going to go ahead and just throw a dart at the wall. Good Burger 3, if that happens. <laughs> <laughs> That's patreon.com slash GB podcast. <clears throat> Anyways, let's get started. Whimsy meter. How whimsical is the movie on a scale of one to ten? We're going to start with aggro. This one was sort of a, a, a complex beast to address whimsy wise, because I, I believe that it has the 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 breathless pacing. It, it has a lot of the content necessary, a complete refusal to operate on any sort of standard logic base. But it it also did that to the point where it felt like my brain was going to boil inside of my skull, mm -hmm. which is a very serious matter. Um, <laughs> so I I, I I think this film runs like all the way up to the limit, uh, and I, I'm I'm gonna give it a nine. There's a unicorn that flies with water hooves, and he wants to learn friendship, so his horn sword will fight a weird Appalachian guy who lives in a mine. Huh? <laughs> I'm sorry. I just... <laughs> so that was a five, right? I, I lost it a bit at the end there. Uh, no, I'm going to give it a nine. We are, a nine. We are full okay. of whimsy. Okay. All right. Uh, next goes Chris. Cool, Chris. Shibuya? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I didn't get that read at all, aside from buying the Darumaka box lunches and trying to rescue Scraggy from being the dumbest Pokemon alive. Uh, there's, like, no whimsy. It's a child a child unicorn having PTSD because he chose to throw hands with God and found out. <laughs> so, you know, the Metal Pipe SFX was funny and Bulldore on the Ice was funny. <laughs> so, with those two combined with the, the box lunches, it gets a three from me. 
Okay. Um, I go next. Uh, yeah, I actually was going to. I was gonna. I was gonna give this a two because I. I think the best way I could describe it is if you have a person you think is your friend who chases you around like with a knife. That does not make that your athlete friend because they're running all the time. <laughs> <laughs> this movie has things that described in a very generous way might just be whimsical. But frankly, it seems more like a whimsy shaped box, I think is the best way to put it. Like these events could be whimsical, but in the way they're presented and the way they're executed, it seems so perfunctory almost. It it just seems heartless, joyless. This easily could have been, but it ain't. So I'm giving it a two. Bob. Yeah, it, like you guys are saying, it really should be whimsical, but just something about the way they do it makes it not at all. So I'm going to also sit on a three. Like, I'm not I'm not getting, like, we don't have Ash going around flying in the sky with Cal Caldeo or anything just whimsying around. It's just, the, the movie is very to the point and doesn't have anything whimsical to do in it. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like if they explained the sort of justice and, like, showed them earning that title and that title meaning something that would be whimsical, but just being like, he wants to have this name tag that says, hello, my name is sword of justice. Uh huh. You know, that doesn't really yeah, it's, land the same. It's all the trappings of something whimsical, but it just isn't. <laughs> well, our next segment is the Dex check. Oh God. Yeah. I need to move that first. So that way I don't have to crawl back into the mines. <laughs> That's okay though. This movie had just, about as many Pokemon as I had good ideas. No, that can't be true. That's like 25. Are we <laughs> counting the opening? Th that opening sequence? Where they flash the gifts on screen? Uh, you know, I'm not going to give it to them this time. Okay. Because they didn't show a normal animated sequence with all of those things. Most of them are just gifts in a box. Yeah. The Pokemon for this movie are Pikachu, Meowth, a X Don't say Meowth, you bastards. <laughs> right? He's, He's in on the, the screen. He's, uh, He's hiding. He's incognito. Ax you. That could have been anyone. You don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Oshawa, Pig Knight, Snivy, Scraggy, Boldor, Excadrill, Emolga, Pansage, Crustle, Stunfisk, Audino, Vanillite, Leopard, Herdier, Kira, Keldeo, Cobalion, Terrakion, Verizon, Cryagonal, Drudagon, Tibpole, Pidov, Mincino, Deerling, Saucebuck, Buffalant, Swanacotney, Whimsicott, Cubchu, and Basculin. I almost forgot about Basculin. Yeah, I'm not covering the Pokemon in the Sword, the Sword of Justice legend or the opening title. Go fuck yourselves. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, hmm. Leading us off on the uh, dex check is uh, Chris. Okay, uh, Shibuya, what do you think? Actively the worst dex check we've ever had. No Pokemon outside of this gen, apart from Pikachu. And even then, Pikachu doesn't fucking count, as far as I'm concerned. Oh my god, two out of ten. It only gets that two, because you kept Scraggy. <sighs> yeah, I feel like we have some really... It's an anemic showing here. There's... Not any of the joy for fifth gen Pokemon that you saw in the last movie. There's not a well rounded cast of Pokemon. There's not a well rounded cast of humans either. Yeah, there's not even a cast of Pokemon or humans, really. It, this is more like a cast you would put on an arm, but there's not even an arm in it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm also going to give this pretty low. I'm going to give it a three. Uh, Bob. Yeah, I'm going to give this a one because it has. Very little in general. And then what it does do, I'm upset with. Like what they did with every one of those legendary swordsmen. Like at least give them unique sword ideas. Instead of just like, they all grow it out of their head. Like, come on. Yeah, one of them should have like a sword tail and another one a sword butt. So right, Verizian has the sword things coming out of her shoulders. I thought those would be swords. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm sorry. <sighs> yeah, no, I'm just upset. Agra, what do you think? I, I want to be very clear that there being a single shot with like four Tim poles in it is the only thing dragging this movie's dex check, kicking and screaming <laughs> up to a two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Next up is the gun check. Could the events of this movie have been better solved with a gun? 
Uh, we're going to start this segment with Shibuya. Shockingly, it's a no. Because if you try to shoot Kirim, Kirim just goes, I'm going to fucking kill you and kills you. And if you, try, <laughs> if you try to shoot Keldio and prevent Kirim from chasing you, then Kirim would just scream, that kid was supposed to be mine to kill and then kills you. Hmm. None of the major forces here are able to be defeated by a gun. It's a no. Okay. Um, I'm going a different angle this time. Because preventing the movie only necessitates our main cast not show up. So I'm going to shoot Ash Ketchum in the leg. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> at at, at uh, the uh, Windy City. So that way he can just sit around and eat some boxed lunches and have a great time instead of dealing with Caldeo's cowardice. What is the bento are, box lady? She just got a gun? <laughs> yes. Are, are you proposing that's what Team Rocket was doing in their trench coats? Yeah. <laughs> Trying to find the perfect angle? Somehow they forgot the sniper rifle all three times. <laughs> See, did they ever pay for their box lunches? Because I feel like that lady should have just screamed at them, you pay before you leave, and then started blasting. It, right? It becomes like a trigger animated sequence where Ash is flipping <laughs> through the air wildly as bullets whiz past him. That would be awesome. That would be anything. That would be a thing, and I sure do love things. Bob, the, are you going to solve this movie with a gun check? How does it pass? All right. Okay. Caldeo falls on top of the train yes ash goes up there to check on <laughs> I her thought you were gonna say a train worker goes up and it's like <laughs> no, no hijackers no freeloaders no free <laughs> he just unloads the whole clip like it's clear caldea's dead on the first bullet but he just keeps going this is the only part of his job this guy enjoys caldea starts speaking you hear his voice and your reaction is just violent uh-huh <laughs> What were you going to say, Bob? <laughs> well, when we didn't cover it, but when Ash first gets up to him, he, like, donkey kicks Ash. And that's when Ash should have shot him in the head and rolled him off, and then we'd never <laughs> see him again. <laughs> Ash is like, I've been told to not let people bully me by my mom. <laughs> and as Ash does that, unloads the bullet into Keldeo and rolls him off the top of the train, uh, fucking silence, just like, Delia seems like a nice woman. <laughs> <laughs> Agro, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I think we're in an Ark of the Covenant problem where even if the main cast hadn't have showed up, all all the dumb shit that happened would have happened anyway, pretty much exactly the same way. I don't think any human involved in this circumstance having a firearm could have averted anything that happened. God, now you're just making me think the movie that's even worse involves none of the cast and is just about the swordsmen. <laughs> oh. yeah that, that'd suck yeah <laughs> a lot it, yeah. if it's the same runtime it sucks i would argue that you do that as an episode of the anime with like a movie budget and it actually rules yeah but it's just like it's it's more tarachion with his two big face his two human manticore face <laughs> getting more screen time <laughs> yes but consider tarachion is the only one of the swords that i look at and i go oomphy <laughs> Uh, I used to like Cobalion, and then I heard that name said like that. <laughs> now I'm not so sure. Anyways, we got to move on to the MVP, most valued Pokemon, and I get to go first. I wonder why I kept calling out Curse's name since he's not here. That's very strange that I maintained his turn order and didn't change it. Anyways, Audino gets MVP because Audino is taking care of that Cub Chew, and that Cub Chew is very cute. So thanks, Audino. <laughs> I forgot. It was there for like three seconds, if even. Right. It was. It, it is the highlight of this film. <laughs> it's a great moment. That Cub Chew is adorable. We now move to Bob. I got to give this to uh, Dar Maka. He had a great branding deal. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> got to talk to his agent. Right? I'm not sure which Dar Maka did it, but whoever did. Props. It work. <laughs> Agro, who's your MVP? It, it, it's going to be that vanilla. <laughs> Even in this post-scarcity economy, the only thing that keeps this culture moving is willful race traders like Vanillite oh. selling oh. ice cream <laughs> to children at the behest of other humans. Well, much to think about, Shibuya, who's your MVP? For the first 15 minutes of this film, it was brain death, and then I get the title card, and I'm like, okay, will I get anything? And then my son 
my special boy <laughs> voiced by Jason Griffith. S- Scraggy is on screen during the shitty Christian rock and I clap and anything <laughs> is happening in my mind. Fuck yeah, Scraggy. God. Let's go. That sequence. We're friends forever. We're being very rude to the other train passengers. <laughs> <laughs> Scraggy's great in everything he shows up in. Yes. Well, uh, now we got to answer the hard question. Is Ash in a coma? Bob. No, that'd be more interesting. <laughs> Ag- <laughs> aggro. <laughs> Yes, this entire story was clearly written by a 10-year-old. Shibuya! (laughs) No, because this is what brain death looks like, and he would be dead, not in a coma. (laughs) I submit, Ash is not in a coma. I'm in a coma after watching this. Yes, actually. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Man, now we can move on to our next segment, Arceus Ex Machina. How convenient. Oh, wait, I'm going to read, as I always do, the exact text. How big are the plot holes just so the movie ends on the status quo of the show? Uh, We're going to start with Agra. At the point at which Nurse Joy just says, oh, yeah, Kurem, he lives in the old (laughs) abandoned mine. I realized we had slipped through the fucking looking glass and we're not in a space that interacted with reality. <laughs> we just we like the fevered mind of a dying 10 year old envisioned yeah you remember those two sick ass dragon legendaries we met well i i made up a, a completely original character that's both of them and is super <laughs> awesome <laughs> it's it we're, we're at we're at peak we are at a 10 arceus himself came down to delete this timeline <laughs> Uh, Shibuya, what do you think? (laughs) That is interesting that you say Arceus deleted this timeline because after the last movie's been rendered non-canon because of its split timeline shenanigans where either Legendary (laughs) was their ally and either Legendary was the villain, uh, nothing affects anything. Nothing fucking happens. You have 10 minutes of shit that matters in this movie. It's a one because nothing can affect anything anymore. What city were they going to? Fuck you! It's a city that barely exists on the edge of people's consciousness or some shit. You can't have a problem with continuity when continuity unravels. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, I feel like this movie, the events of it are about as meaningful if the whole cast just stared at wallpaper for two hours. I feel like nothing amazing needed to occur to reset the timeline back to normal because one might argue nothing fucking happened. One. Hey, Bob, what do you think? I have to give it a two because Ash did not seem to remember those legendaries. But also <laughs> nothing happened and maybe he just wasn't that interested in talking about it. He's so too, it's unclear. He was too busy thinking about pancakes. Yes. <laughs> well, that's all of our segments. But we now have to rate this movie based on a 1 to 649 scale. Because, you know, there, there are that many Pokemon. It's a very smart bit. I guess starting us will be Shibuya. What score are you giving this movie? This should not have been a movie. It it had half of its runtime completely wasted with needless fluff, flashbacks that didn't matter, and an opening 15 minutes that made me wish for death. And I think if you rearrange and you cut this down to a maybe 30 or 40 minute OVA, it's more impactful, I'll remember anything from it, and you don't waste really good individual scenes like the Bulldor skating or the final fight with Keldeo and Kiram when the peanut gallery is not fucking spouting like you're six. <laughs> the wasted potential of this is the most upsetting part because this could have been a good movie, and it's advertising itself as the 15th anniversary movie for Pokemon. Yeah. And I think it's really fucked up that this is released alongside fucking Gen 5. Yeah. Yeah, made me w- wish we could get out of Gen 5 movies because that's just, it was that rough. <laughs> we have more legendaries we haven't covered. I'm sorry. Oh, no. Um, this is being carried entirely by the scenes I thought were cool. But God, it gets a 380 from me. I'm so mad that you gave me a movie that could have been good. I would rather have a movie that's entertainingly bad than a movie that could have been good. Um. The the number I'm about to say might sound high, but keep in mind inflation, you know, hyperinflation here with the numbers. It's really tragic. Anyways, I give it a 97. This is uh, the worst movie. <laughs> this is absolutely the worst movie, in my opinion. 
the only reason that score is not lower is because I can imagine it even worse animated. <laughs> you remove Scraggy, you remove Audino and Cub Shoe. See, because these should be great legendaries. So I can imagine you made it about worse legendaries, but the way these legendaries act in this film doesn't really do much for people who are fans of them, I feel. Yeah, they do nothing. Like, this is about the test to become a legendary or something <laughs> instead of what the legendary would something. do. Or something. <laughs> I'll say that before this movie, I was apathetic on Keldeo the Pokemon. Mm -hmm. And Keldeo the character, I'm still apathetic on, but Keldeo the Pokemon, now I look at him and I go, okay, I kind of see it. Oh, yeah. So there's that at least. I like Keldeo and I like Cobalion, but uh, this movie is making me rethink that. <laughs> it's actively <laughs> reprogramming me. <laughs> Uh, yeah, 97, Bob. Yeah, I can't imagine them making a worse movie. Like, <laughs> yeah, at some point you'd think they would just shut down production. <laughs> Unfortunately, I can. I think that's the difference. I've seen worse. It's in our future. <laughs> oh, no! I, I still can't. I just, literally, it's the worst set of, we have almost no human characters. The ones that are coming back, like Saiglin and stuff, suck. Um, hey, did you know Iris hates the cold? Did you know she hates it? She, she it's has to true. remind you she hates it. I actually yeah. didn't note that once, but it's true. <laughs> she says it multiple fucking times, and I'm like, thanks, sweetie. Shut the fuck up. Like five times, and I just want to fucking shake her until she stops speaking. <laughs> this movie has convinced me to never watch the fifth gen anime because I actually like Iris, and every time I say that, people are like, she's insufferable, and I go, did you watch the anime? And they say yes. So I'm just never watching that. Yeah, I know people who watched it, and they've told me the exact same shit. Yeah, so, no. <laughs> so, I'm, that's rough. I'm sorry. Yeah, I've never heard anything good about the first-gen anime run, which is crazy, because, like, six and four has been pretty great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, this is this is bad. I can't think of anything positive about this movie. I'm going to give it a 50. Is this movie safe for human consumption? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, barely. Barely, right? <laughs> you don't... It's not going to hurt you. You just be, will be bored. <laughs> It builds character. <laughs> <laughs> Agro, what rating do you give this film? I have literally seen actual episodes of Paw Patrol with clearer <laughs> through lines and more cogent morals than this. I could ask why you've seen Paw Patrol, but I'm going to avoid that. <laughs> there were four temples in that pool. <laughs> four. Fuck this clown show of a movie. <laughs> okay, that's one point for every temple, I guess. Yeah. Can I rethink my score? Can I edit? <laughs> <laughs> I'll allow it. I'll allow it. Uh, I'll be kind and I'll give it a 100. <laughs> okay. That's, you know. I, I still think the fight scenes are good sometimes uh when it's not cutting to the peanut gallery that's yeah it. yeah uh, well you know that's shockingly generous because if you take my score and agro score and add them together we're only one point <laughs> higher than your score <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing uh well that brings our average excluding chris's numbers to uh 251 and you can Oh, wait, no, that's the total number of points this time. Damn, this is rough. Our total number of points last time was almost 10 times as high. Ooh. Well, uh, that's going to do it for this episode of Pokemon Go to the Movies. Remember, you can you Pokemon Go, Pokemon Home, Pokemon Stay, Pokemon Here. This movie put me to Pokemon Sleep. Goodbye, everybody. Balls. <laughs> <laughs> The executive producers for this Gig Boots video are Esme, Ely Broyles, Spaceman Spiff, Red Blaze 27, Brendan O'Sullivan, A Reminder for Symphony of War, Cooper Tank, Very Best Plot, Iconic Bane, and Rado. Thank you very much to our executive producers, and also these guys. If you want to become an executive producer or normal patron, head on over to patreon.com slash gigaboots today.